شيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم محمد ولا أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم رجس وتحرهم تطحيرا واللانة الدائمة الباقية لعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام صلوات قلنا إكبر الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى bless you all for fulfilling the command of Allah about loving the family of the Prophet. This is manifested by remembering the said events and the days related to the Ahlul Bayt and also celebrating the days of joy and happiness related to the Ahlul Bayt. We have been going through the Azhar of Sayyid al-Shahada this year and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity. Among the Shias from South Asian background, tonight's Majlis in a way is the last in the series of the Azhar which started on the first of Muharram. Because then next we have Eid al-Zahra salawatullah alayha <coughs> Keeping that in mind, and also one of the statement from the 11th Imam, I would like to talk about the importance of ziyarat, especially by looking at the hadith of the Imam, which I had talked about it in detail at other times. Our 11th Imam was born in year 232 of the Hijrah. He lived for 28 years. He was born in Samarra, and his wafat also happened in Samarra. This is the time where we see that, you know, from the six Imams onward after that, none of the Khulafa of Banu Abbas left our Imams in Medina. They always were concerned, felt threatened by their popularity, by their knowledge, by their personality. So they always wanted to keep a watchful eye on them. And so you see the seventh Imam actually brought as a prisoner, put in prison in Basra, eventually in Baghdad. Then you look at the case of the eighth Imam, of course he was called all the way to Marv in a different, uh, you know, with a different pretext. And so all the Imams you see after that, none of them basically lived in the last days of their lives in Medina. And our 10th Imam also was in Samarra, where the 11th Imam was actually born. Out of his 28 years of life, the last six years of the 11th Imam's life is the time of his Imamat. It was a very brief time, but most of the time he was under surveillance of the spies and informers of the government. And so he was not really in a situation of being in regular contact with the Shias. And this is where we see already the institution of Vikalat had been established. One of the important sayings that we have from the Imam, 11th Imam, is the issue of the signs of the Shias. And we talked about that hadith in detail, but I would like to just talk on just one of the five. Where he says, number one, among the signs of the mu'min, alamatul mu'min khams. Number one, a mu'min is somebody who does 51 rakat. 
So wajib namaz and the nafila namaz. Number two, he says, was ziyaratul arba'in. A mu'min is somebody who goes for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain on the day of arba'in. وَاتَّخَدْتُمْ بِالْيَمِينِ One of the signs of a mu'min is that he wears the ring on the right hand. And then ta'afiru al-jabeen, that a mu'min, one of the signs is that when he goes to sajda, his forehead is always touching the earth. And finally a mu'min, one of the signs of a mu'min is that whenever he says Bismillah rahman rahim in the namaz and the surahs, he always says that loudly, whether it is Fajr or Zuhr or Asr or Maghrib or Isha. Ziyarat Arba'in. There is a reason why Imam puts that in the five signs of a mu'min. Because when we look at the institution of Ziyarat, we have to realize that some of these rituals that we do, you know, unfortunately our community has this attitude, oh, ritual. Ritual means doesn't have any value in meaning. We do not realize that when you talk about religion, how do you express your affiliation to a religion? The only way you do that is by doing the rituals. I mean, if you go to uh, an, any encyclopedia and look at the definition of rituals, and you will see they define rituals means the actions by which you express your affiliation to a group or a religion. So this is very important. You look at the process of Hajj. Muslims believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond the concept of physical body. He cannot be limited to any, you know, space anywhere. But when it comes to namaz, you know, one ayat in the Quran says, wherever you turn, Allah is there. But when it comes to the five namaz, we are told that when we do the namaz, we have to face only the Kaaba. Not here and there. Does Allah live in the Kaaba? No. He is everywhere. So why this restriction? This is where we see that, you know, sometimes when we do this ritual, especially on a collective basis, that defines our identity as follower of a certain group. So just as Hajj is an important ritual, which defines us as a Muslim, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who have the means of traveling all the way to Mecca once in their lifetime, they must go for it. Similarly, when we look at the concept of ziyarat to the shrines of the imams, this is also a way of expressing our affiliation to a community of the followers of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat Basically, looking at the ahadith, there are four purposes why the ziyarat is done. Number one, to be in contact with the, with the Imam. And by being in contact with the Imam, whether he is alive or dead, by going to the shrine, we actually are seeking their blessings of intercession and shafat in the hereafter. Number two, it is a way of honoring the, our Imams. And by doing that, we are honoring our own faith, our religion, and our mazhab. And number three, when we do this ziyarat, this is actually renewing our pledge of loyalty to our imams. And finally, the first point that I mentioned earlier, that it is a way of expressing our identity as a community. That we are khassa, we are shia, we are not amma, we are not, we are different from the other Muslims in, in the dunya. And when we look at the you know, the uh, attitude of the rulers towards the ziyarat. It's interestingly, you know, this concept of ziyarat didn't exist before Karbala. It didn't really exist in that way. It's imams who came after Karbala who were saying, go for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain 
And you will see that the reaction of the rulers was completely opposite. During the time of Banu Umayyah, they actually put, you know, their own uh, soldiers patrol towards all the roads leading to Karbala in order to discourage people from going to Karbala for the ziyarat. And those who attempted to do that, if they were caught, they were punished, harassed, and some of them were even killed. And this is not only Shia history talking about it. You can look at the history of Tabari or even uh, Al-Kamil fi tariq by Ibn Asir. These are the prominent you know, Muslim historians who talk about it, that during the Banu Umayyah time, this is what was happening. Even in the Abbasid era, it was even worse. Only during two you know, uh, time frame in history, where it became more easier for Shias to go for the ziyarat. One is during the days of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Not his entire imamat, but especially during that time, which coincided with the transition of power from Banu Umayyah to Banu Abbas. Since both Zalimin were busy with one another, they didn't have time for others. And that is the time you will see even the sixth Imam emphasize the point of ziyarat and the issue of, you know, saying the poetry and the marasi for Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And the second time was the days of our eighth Imam. Because he was appointed by Imam Manu Rashid as the crown prince, that became, you know, a time where the Shias found themselves in a more tolerant uh, atmosphere. And even Imam at that time encouraged people to go for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But later on, you know, you look at the time of the ninth Imam and tenth Imam, especially the tenth Imam, he lived during the time of Mutawakkil. Mutawakkil is the one who, in his fif- 15 years of rule, attempted four times, and this is from the Muslim historians, not Shia sources. He attempted four times to erase the, any sign of the grave of Imam Hussain bin Ali alayhi salatu was salam. And so why they used to do this? Because they realized that, you know, this ziyarat has an impact on the Shias. On an individual level as well as on communal level. And this is where I think we have to reflect about it. Alhamdulillah, our community is blessed. They have the means and the times. And you know, this tradition of ziyarat is increasing day by day. But we have to think about it. When you go for ziyarat, what are you going for? This is not just a ritual. This is actually renewing your pledge of loyalty to the imam. You don't have access to the Imam of the time, but you go for the ziyarat of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. That is way, one way of renewing our pledge to the Imam. You know, if you look especially since the 11th Imam emphasized ziyarat al arbaeen and if you look at the wordings which has come from the 6th Imam for that day's ziyarat, which is more than ziyarat al but includes many things which is there in ziyarat al just one sta- statement from that. And that is our pledge of renewing our loyalty to the Imams. Where we say, وَقَلْبِ لِقَلْبِكُمْ سَلْمْ وَعَمْرِ لِعَمْرِكُمْ مُتَّبِعْ What does it mean? Even in Thursday night, Ziyarat Warisa, we say that. When we say, قَلْبِ لِقَلْبِكُمْ سَلْمْ My heart submits to your heart. Think about it. When you are standing there by the ziyarat of, you know, the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, and you are saying that, do you really mean that? And if you mean it, there should be difference in you when you come back. The ziyar before his journey and after his journey, there has to be a difference. 
wa amri li amrikum muttaba' my issues my actions my decisions are in the obedience of your command whatever you say i will do that and so when you do the ziyarat you know you cannot be the same person who went to the ziyarat and who has come back from the ziyarat similarly for hajj if a person goes all the way for hajj and comes back same you know he should pray he should pray for himself and maybe go again and come back in a, a, as a different person and so there has to be some change otherwise you know the whole purpose of ziyarat is defeated salawat from the ikbar since is the wafat of the 11th imam let us look at what advice and commands he has given to us wa amri li amrikum muttaba' this applies to imam hasan askari alayhi salam also just one one uh, one out of his many many communications that he issued for the shias we'll just go item by item where he says usikum bi taqwa allah wal wara fi dinikum wal ijtihad lillah that i advise you number one to have this taqwa of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala try to build you know an understanding that you are always aware of allah's presence in your life that is the essence of taqwa wal wara fi dinikum imam says i advise you to be extra cautious in the matters of your religion we are told you know morana don't talk about this extras just give us the minimum and that is the work of the mujtahidin and the fuqaha yes whenever you ask the masala they will just give you the basics what is halal what is haram but that is just the basics this is where the imam is saying that al wara fi dinikum al wara means to be extra careful so al imam is saying that i would like you to be you know extra careful in the matters of your religion even if you have to go to that extra mile go for that extra mile wal ijtihad lillah and struggle hard for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says was sidq al hadith wa ada al amana ila man i'tamanakum min birr min birr aw fajir then he says two things number one be truthful in your speech and be trustworthy in the amanat and the trust which is given to you doesn't matter whether it is given to you by a good person or a bad person amanat is amanat it is you who are going to be questioned about it on the day of uh, qiyamah you look at the name the the titles of rasulullah even before islam started he was known among the mushrikeen of makkah as as-sadiq wal amin the truthful and the trustworthy person it's amazing that mushrikeen fought against the prophet they used different labels against him nothing new when we hear this you know fanatic uh, you know terrorist fundamentalist and this and that even those there's something used to happen but look at the labels they use first they call him majnoon then they call him sha'ir then they call him sahir but never ever did the mushrikeen of the of makkah ever label the prophet as nauzubillah kazib they didn't dare put that label of liar on the personality of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so even the enemies you know appreciated this character of the prophet as the truthful person as the trustworthy person and our imam is saying i advise you on these two characteristics and doesn't matter whether the amanat is coming from a good person or a bad person if i may paraphrase it whether it comes from a shia or a non shia or it comes from a muslim or a non muslim 
Because mashallah our people do ishtihad quite a lot. Kafir ka maal to halal hai. Aray bhai, think about yourself. You are going to be questioned about it on the day of Qiyamah. And then the Imam says, وَطُولُ sujood wa husnul الْجَوَارِ do prolong sajdas. When you do the sajda shukr or in your nafila prayers, prolong your sajda. Prolonging the sajda is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, but immediately Imam goes to husnul jawar. Be a good neighbor. On the one hand he is saying to prolong, prolong your sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And immediately he says, be good to your neighbor. Neighbors, we are told, according to the Quran and Hadith, are of three kinds. One has three rights on you, the other has two rights, and one has only one right. You could have somebody who is your relative, and he's a Muslim, and he's a neighbor. So that fellow has three rights on you. Then you have somebody who is not your relative, but a Muslim and a neighbor, so he has two rights on you. And then you have somebody who is neither a relative, nor a Muslim, but he's still your neighbor. And so he has that right of neighbor. And what the Imam says, Husn al Jawar, be kind and good to your neighbor. Salawat <laughs> Pranayakbarasalam. Imam says these are the teachings and the values with which the Imam, with, 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 with which the Prophet has come. These are the things that the Imam is expecting from us. So when we say qalbi li qalbikum salim wa amri li amrikum muttabi' remember these amr which is coming from the 11th Imam. The advice continues. Now he's talking about the community. You know how do you min- maintain this sense of belonging to a community. He says, Sallu fi asha'irihim. Participate in jamaat prayers. So jamaat prayers is not ibadat only. It is a social dimension. And that is why the more the num- number of people, the sawab increases. Because it is again a sense of building a community by doing the namaz jamaat in congregation. Washhad jana izuhum. When members of the community die, participate in their funerals. Wa'udu maradahum. And when their sick people are not feeling well, go and visit them. Wa'addu hukukuhum. And fulfill their rights. Help them out. Now we can do it individually or we can even do it as a community. Or as an organization. When we talk about Addu Hukukuhum, you know, especially the, the system that we have in this part of the world, it should be such that whenever a member of a community has a problem, the first place as a point of reference should be the, you know, the center. Where you should be able to relate to it that, well, I'll go there and maybe I'll get some help. And so when we talk about these issues, this is where Imam is saying, you know, these are the ways by which you can express your affiliation and belonging to your own community. Salawat Pranayak Paral. Then the 11th Imam says, فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ مِنْكُمْ إِذَا وَرَعَ فِي دِينِهِ وَصَدَقَ فِي حَدِيثِهِ وَعَدَّ الْأَمَانَ وَحَسَرَ وَحَسُنَ خَلْقَهُ مَعَ النَّاسِ وَقِيلَ هَذَا شِيْعِيٌ فَيَسُرُّنِي ذَلِكِ Imam says, when a person from among you is cautious in the matter of his religion, truthful in his speech, you know, is trustworthy in the matters of amanat, and he has good akhlaq with in, in, while inter, interacting with the people, and when others say he's a Shia, with this good akhlaq, فَيَسُرُّنِ ذَلِكَ This makes me indeed happy. The pledge of loyalty is to make the Imam of our time happy. 
and of the imam of our time will be happy by these issues by having good akhlaq with one another by being truthful and by fulfilling amanat and by being careful extra careful in the matters of our religion ittaqu allah wa kunu zainan wa la takunu shayna fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be a matter of pride pride for us zain zinat imam says you are our shia when you do something good it brings up our prestige in our name wala takunu shayna do not be a disgrace for us jarru ilayna kull muwaddatin by your akhlaq and your attitude you know pull all good and low towards us by your akhlaq you will be able to pull people towards the imams whom you are following wadfa'u anna kull qabihin and you know keep away all bad image from us fa innahu ma qila fina min has min husn fa nahnu ahluhu whatever good is said about us we deserve it wa ma qila fina min su'in fa ma nahnu kadhalik anything bad which is said about us we do not deserve that but what imam is saying that this all depends on how you portray us to others by your behavior and by your akhlaq salawat upon you ikbar allah because imam says remember whatever good qualities are there in a human being it is with us whatever is evil is there it's not with us and he says lana haqqun fi kitab allah wa qarabatu rasul min rasulillah wa tathhirun min allah he says three things he said number one we have been mentioned and we have a haq in the quran quran talks about us and we are related and we are close to the messenger of allah wa tathhirun min allah and allah has purified us the ayat of tathhir is there لا يدعيه احد غيرنا الا كذاب anyone other than us claims that he is part of that ayat of tathhir is a liar purification by allah is only for the ahlul bayt and this is where we have to realize that when we talk about the status of the imam you know they are up there you know let me digress before i continue this advice of the imam going back to the ziyarat of arba'in even in ziyarat awarisa the same words have come where when we talk about imam musa alayhi salam look at some of the qualities and both the ziyarat of arba'in and warisa has come from our sixth imam and the narrator of both is same individual by the name of safwan al jamma We say to Imam Hussein alayhi salam ashhadu annaka kunta nuran fil aslab ash-shamikha wal arham al-mutahhara Think about it what does it mean Especially you know those who think well imams are just good people and learned scholars nothing more than that Look at these words When you are saying ashhadu annaka I bear witness that O Hussein كنت نورا في الاسلاب الشامخه والارحام المطهره اي بير ويتنس ذا رو حسين يو وير ا نور يو وير ا لا يو وير يو وير ا لايت كرييتد باي الله سبحانه وتعالى اند بليسد وير في الاسلاب الشامخه والارحام المطهره بيفور يو كيم تو ذس دنيا يور نور واز بليسد ان ذا لوينز اوف نوبل مان اند pure wombs of the women this is the famous hadith that we have where when we talk about rasulullah and the panjatan where allah created their noor before anything else awwal ma khalaq allah nuri and then that those five anwar were put in the loins of adam and then goes to the womb of hawa 
and it goes from one generation to another until they came to this dunya. What it means is that when you look at the ancestors of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, all of them were muwahid, none of them were ever idol worshipper or kafir. Salawat on Because the next sentence, Lan tunajjiskal jahiliyyat bi anjasiha. Because kufr, jahiliya here means kufr. Kufr with its impurity did not defile you. And then we say, Walam tulbiskal mudlahimmati min thiyabiha. Which means that the darkness did not engulf you with its coverings. So there was no zulamat, no darkness, and no kufr. All the way from Adam to the Khata. They were all pure and mawahid in that way. وَأَشْحَدُ أَنَّكَ مِنْ دَعَائِمِ الدِّينِ وَأَرْكَانِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَمَعْقِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And I testify that you are the pillars from one of the pillars of the faith and one of the supporters of the Muslims and one of the refuge for the mu'mineen and the believers. وَأَشْحَدُ أَنَّكَ الْإِمَامُ الْبَرُّ الْتَقِيُّ الرَّضِيُّ الزَّكِيُّ الْحَادِيُّ الْمَحْدِي And we testify when we say to Imam Hussain alayhi salam that you are an imam, you are righteous, you are pure, you are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the guide and you are the one who is rightly guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we do not only stop with Imam Hussain. We say, وَأَشْحَدُ عَنَّكَ الْأَئِمَّةَ مِنْ وُلْدِكَ We testify that the children, the imams from your descendants, including the eleventh imam, they are kalimatu taqwa. Kalimatu taqwa, the literal translation would be the word of taqwa. It doesn't mean word of taqwa, it means authority of taqwa. That's where you get taqwa from. And they are a'alamul huda, they are the signs of guidance. Wal urwatul wusqa, they are the firm rope hanging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala down here. If you want to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ahlul Bayt are al ulwatul wusqa, the firm rope. And then we say, wal hujjat wa ala ahlid dunya, and they are the proof of Allah for the people of this dunya. Salawat wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa So the 11th Imam is saying, this is our status. Do not disgrace us by doing things where people will say, oh, these are the Shias of Ahlul Bayt, and this is what they are doing. Maintain our status the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us. The advice continues where he says, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ وَذِكْرَ الْمَوْتِ You know, maintain the remembrance of Allah and remember death. وَتَلَاوَةُ الْقُرْآنِ and recitation of the Qur'an وَالصَّلَاةُ عَلَى النَّبِي وَالصَّلَوَاتُ عَلَى النَّبِي and reciting salawat because salawat on Rasulullah has multiple rewards. Salawat from the Iqbarah. At the end, and it seems this was a written communication of the 11th Imam as an advice to the Shias, he says, ma bihi. Remember, try to memorize this advice that I have given to you. Allah, I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam says, I convey my salams to you. This is not only for the people of the 11th time of the 11th Imam. Even reading now, this is the salam and the advice of the Imam to each one of us. Salawat from the Akbar. So remember, ziyarat is not only vacation. It should have that impact. Where the za'ir, when he comes back, they should be changed. We are not saying they become perfect. But at least there should be a change, especially keeping those words. 
قلبی لی قلبی کم سلم و عمری لی عمری کم متبع سالوار پرنے ایک بار آر زیارت کے اہمیت کے بارے میں گیارو امام کے اس حدیث کو ذہن میں رکھتے ہوئے کچھ باتیں ہم نے آپ کے سامنے پیش کی ہے کہ اگر زیارت صرف ایک ریچول تھا ایک بہت ہی عام رسم تو اس زمانے اور اس زمانے کے جو ظالم حاکم ہوتے تھے ان کو پریشانی نہ ہوتی ان بادشاہوں کو اور حکمرانوں کو زیارت سے ڈر کیوں لگتا ہے اگر زیارت صرف ویکیشن کی بات ہے تو وہ کہتے ہیں ان کو ویکیشن کرنے دو اور گمراہ ہوتے رہیں گے نہیں وہ جانتے ہیں کہ شیعہ جب زیارت کے لیے جاتے ہیں ان کے دینداری کا جذبہ بڑھتا ہے ان کے وفاداری کا جذبہ بڑھتا ہے ان کے کومیونٹی کی آئیڈنٹیٹی اور مضبوط ہوتی ہے یہ محسوس کرتے ہیں کہ ہاں ہم شیعہ اہل البیت میں سے ہیں اور سب سے بڑی بات یہ ہے کہ جب آپ زیارت کے لیے جاتے ہیں زیارت پڑھتے ہیں تو وہاں یہ سبق ملتا ہے ہمیں کہ جس طرح سے امام حسین علیہ السلام نے اپنے زمانے کے ظالم بادشاہ کے خلاف احتجاج کیا تھا ہمیں بھی اپنے لیول پر جہاں جہاں ہم رہتے ہیں جہاں ظلم ہوتا ہے ہمیں بھی احتجاج کی آواز بلند کرنی یہی وجہ ہے جس کے وجہ سے یہ ڈرتے تھے بنو امیہ کے خلافاء جو ہیں یہ زیارت پر پابندی اسی لئے لگاتے ہیں متوکل جیسا ملعون اسی لیے یہ پابندی لگاتے تھے صرف اس زمانے کی بات نہیں ہے اس زمانے میں بھی آپ دیکھ لیں صدام صدام نے چہلم کے دن کے عربین کے زیارت کا جو ٹریڈیشن تھا عراق میں جہاں بسرہ سے بھی اتنا دور بسرہ بالکل ساؤس میں ہے یہ نہیں ہے کہ لوگ غریب تھے نہیں ان کی خواہش تھی کہ وہ پیدل چل کے اس بسرہ کے سے کربلا جائیں گے زیارت کے لیے صدام کیوں ڈڑتا تھا اس سے وہ جانتا تھا کہ یہ جائیں گے یہ اور اچھے شیعہ بنیں گے ان کے کرتار میں بہتری آئے گی ان کی معرفت میں اضافہ ہوگا اور اس کردار اور معرفت کے ساتھ ان کا کمیٹمنٹ اپنے مذہب اور قوم کے ساتھ بڑھے گا اور یہ ظلم کو برداش نہیں کریں گے ظلم کے خلاف آواز بلند کریں گے لیکن ہم لوگوں نے ہسٹری میں دیکھ لیا ہے متوکل آیا اور چلا گیا چار بار اس نے پندرہ سال کے اس حکمرانی کے دور میں چار بار اس نے کوشش کی نہ صرف یہ کہ لوگوں کو قتل کیا یا سزا دی اور منع کیا بلکہ القمہ کے نہر کا پانی جو ہے اس کا رخ بدل کے لیا حکم تھا کہ اس طرح سے یہاں جسے کھیتی کی جاتی ہے اس ایریا کو پانی سے ڈبو دیا جائے تاکہ آثار قبر کے بالکل ختم ہو جائے ایک عجیب غریب واقعہ ہم نے پڑھا ہے اسی انہی دو تین دن میں کہ ایک بار اس نے جب یہ کروایا ہے کہ فرات کا پانی پورا جو ہے ان نشانوں کو ختم کر دیتا ہے قبر کے بنو اسد کے قبیلے والے جو وہاں رہتے تھے ایک اس میں سے آیا تلاش میں کہ امام کی قبر کہاں ہے عجیب و غریب بات ہے اس کا بیان ہے کہ ہر تھوڑی دیر پر ہم مٹی اٹھاتے تھے اور سونگتے تھے یہاں تک کہ اس جگہ پہ پہنچے کہ جہاں ہمیں خوشبو جو ہے بالکل مختلف ملی اور مجھے یا احساس ہوا کہ یہ قبر ہے جو حسین کی تو اس تربت میں بھی اس مٹی میں بھی ایک عجیب خوشبو تھی کہ متوکل جیسے لوگ پانی سے اس کو ڈبونی کوشش کرتے تھے لیکن خدا وند عالم کے انتظام تھا کہ یہ قبر یہ باقی رہے گی اس پر مظہر بنے گا اور لوگ زیارت کے لیے آئیں گے صدام نے فرسٹ گلف وور کے بعد کیا کیا تھا اپرائزنگ دو شیعوں کی ہوئی تھی اور بعد میں اس کو دبایا گیا 
کربلا میں جو حملہ ہوا تھا وہ صدام کے بیٹے نے لیڈنگ کی تھی اس میں باقاعدہ بینر لگایا گیا تھا کہ لا شیعہ بعد اليوم کہ فرام ٹوڈے دے ول بی نو شیعہ شیعوں کو ختم کرنے کی بات تھی لیکن متوکل بھی گیا اور حسین کا روزہ ابھی بھی ہے صدام اور اس کی اولاد بھی گئی لیکن حسین کا روزہ ابھی بھی ہے اس سال جو ریپورٹس آ رہی ہے اربعین کے زیارت میں سیونٹین ملین زائرین تھے یہ بات سمجھ میں نہیں آ رہی ہے وہاں نہ اتنے ہوتیلز ہیں نہ اکومیڈیشن کا انتظام ہے لیکن کوئی وہاں بھوکا نہیں رہتا ہے کوئی پیاسا نہیں رہتا ہے چاہے وہ روڈ پر سو جائیں اس لیے کہ روڈ کو یہ موٹر ویکلز کو بند کر دیتے ہیں شہر کے باہر ہی تو یہ جذبہ ہے دنیا دبانے چاہتی ہے اس زیارت کو اس لیے کہ اس انسٹیٹویشن میں وہ طاقت ہے کہ ہر زمانے کا جابر اور ظالم بادشاہ جانتا ہے کہ یہ ہمارے لیے باعث خطرہ ہے اس کی اہمیت کو سمجھیں اور خدا ہم لوگوں کو توفیق دے کہ اگر ہم جائیں تو اس طرح سے آئیں کہ ہمارے میں کوئی تبدیلی ہو چکی ہو امام حسن عسکری علیہ السلام کے روزے کو بھی آپ دیکھیں سامرہ میں یہ وہی شہر ہے جو متوقل کا شہر تھا ان کے اس بارگاہ کو بھی منحدم کرنے والے نے کوشش کی عذیت تو ہم لوگوں کو بہت پہنچی لیکن خدا کے یہ کرم دیکھیں کہ خدا جس کی عظمت کو باقی رکھنا چاہتا ہے وہ بارگاہ دوبارہ پہلے سے بھی زیادہ شان و شوقت کے ساتھ اپنے جگہ پہ تو دنیا کوشش کرے گی آج ہم لوگ جمع ہوئے ہیں اپنے امام زمانہ کے خدمت میں پرسا دینے کے لیے ان کے بابا کے وفات کے سلسلے میں 28 ایئرز کے سن میں اگر وفات ہو تو آپ اندازہ لگا سکتے ہیں کہ یہ فطری اور نیچرل کوزز تو نہیں ہے خود ایج بتا رہی ہے کہ زہر دیا گیا ہے امام آسر کے خدمت میں ہم اتنا کہیں گے کہ مولا گھر کے اندر پہلے نماز جنازہ ہوئی اور آپ کے چچا نے کوشش کی جعفر نے کہا کہ وہ نماز پڑھائیں لیکن اسی وقت امام کمسنی کے باوجود آتے ہیں اپنے چچا کو ہٹاتے ہیں اور کہتے ہیں یہ میرا حق ہے امام حسن عسکری علیہ السلام کی نماز جنازہ گھر کے اندر ہوتی ہے اور اس کے بعد خلفہ کے رکھ رکھاؤ کے بنیاد پر ظاہری جو رکھ رکھاؤ تھا شہر سامرہ میں تمام بازار کو بند کر دیا گیا تھا پبلک مورننگ کا اعلان ہوا تھا پوری پبلک جو ہے اجدہام آتا ہے امام کے جنازے کو گھر سے اٹھایا گیا اور مرکزی میدان میں لایا جاتا ہے اور خلیفہ کا بھائی آتا ہے اور نماز پڑھاتا ہے جنازے کی امام کے جنازے کو پھر دوبارہ اٹھایا جاتا ہے اور وہی گھر جو دس میں امام کا گھر تھا انہی کے قبر کے پہلو میں گیار میں امام کو دفن کیا جاتا ہے امام زمانہ کے خدمت میں اتنا ہم کہیں گے کہ یہ آپ کے دادا کا گھر تھا بابا کے تمنا یہی تھی کہ بابا کے پہلو میں دفن کیا جائے اور وہ دفن ہو سکے شان اور عزت کے ساتھ جنازہ اٹھا لیکن مجھے ایک اور امام یاد آ رہا ہے جس کا نام بھی حسن تھا وہ تو نواس رسول تھا اور اس کی وفات مدینہ ہی میں ہوئی ہے اور اس کی تمنا تھی بھائی سے کہا تھا کہ بھائی میری خواہش ہے کہ میرے نانا کے پہلو میں مجھے دفن کیا جائے لیکن جانتے تھے دشمن جو ہے اس تمنا کو پورا ہونے نہیں دیں گے امام حسن نے امام حسین کو یہ وسیعت کی تھی کہ دیکھو زبرزستی کی بات نہیں ہے تلوار چلانے کی بات نہیں ہے اگر دشمن مانے ہو تو مجھے ماں کے پہلو میں جنت البقی میں دفن کر دینا ازدارار حسین وہ جنازہ تو اٹھا ہے نواز رسول کی 
کہ لاش کو رسول کے پہلو میں دفن کرنے کی بات ہو رہی ہے لیکن وہاں کلمہ پڑھنے والے آتے ہیں اور اس دفن ہونے کے سلسلے کو روکتے ہیں یہاں تک کہ آل مروان نے جو ظلم کیا ہے امام حسین علیہ السلام نے جب دیکھا ہے یہی کہا ہے کہ دیکھو اگر بھائی کی وسیعت نے میرے ہاتھ کو بام نہ دیا ہوتا آج ہم تلوار کے سہارے بھائی کے لاشے کو نانا کے پہل پہلو میں دفن کرتے لیکن بھائی کی وسیعت کا خیال ہے لہٰذا امام حسن کو جا کے جنت البقی میں دفن کر دیا گیا رالانت اللہ علی القوم الظالمین سیعلم الذین ظلم و یمن قلبین ینقلبون خدا وند اس قلب لباس قبول فرما ہمارے گناہ کو بخش دے ہمارے توفیقات میں اضافہ فرما امام کے ظہور میں تاجل فرما ربنا تقبل منہ انکنت السمین علیم ماتم حسین